Welcome back to Iron Fang Invasion, part three of the boss fight to book five. And I think I said this last time as well, but hopefully the last part of the boss fight, it has turned into something of a battle of attrition at this point. And we'll have to see who can hold out the longest Everybody is pretty wounded. There's been a lot of spells going off. There's been a lot of movement through the air, a lot of attacks both directions. I think the only person who is hitherto unscathed is Oren, because he is on the ground where no one else is. And so he's been supporting everybody from below, but uh, he's been well out of the range of any sort of attack. And, and thus is, is pretty doing pretty okay. The rest, you know, varying degrees of wounded. And uh, who knows how Arlantia is feeling. But uh, I guess that's what we're here to find out as we start again in round 27. Top of round 27 of this combat. I have at the top of the round, Kieran. So just to recap, because it's been a little bit of a time since we played, I am in melee with Arlancha. We're surrounding her. I think Gideon and I are on the same level as she is I in the air. I believe so. Okay. Jessup's also flying right next to me. This guy is an air elemental from Orin, right? Yes, there's an air elemental from Orin. There's a rock from Orin. <laughs> I can't remember if Jessup is on the same level of you or I think not. I'm below. Yeah, I want to say he's lower. Okay. Well, oh, that's right. My to hit is quite low right now, but I guess I will just try to full attack her and see how it goes. So we did have haste recast, so I do have haste back on. So... First bite attack is a 36, which I believe was a miss. It will miss. Hasted bite is a 38. 42. will hit. Or 42 oh, will hit, right. yes. Yes, because of Unshakable Zeal. Okay, so then first claw is a 38. Which will hit. Second claw is a 40. Which will hit. First wing is a 34. Second miss. wing is a natural one. Miss. So I rolled 14, 16, 16, 18, 17, 1. So I got one bite and two claws for damage, it looks like. Your to hit really sucks. It does really stink. All right, so bite damage is 19, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing. Claw damage, I will, I'll give this to you because I have to negate the acid. So, oof, 15 points of damage on the first claw and 18 points of damage on the second claw. And also, I don't know if she's subject to flanking, but I had flanking, so that she probably would have... is. I probably would have hit on that first one then with a 38. You didn't have flanking in? I did not have flanking on. Yeah, she doesn't have uncanny dodge that I can see, so she would be flankable. Okay. So then technically that first one would hit and I wouldn't have gotten the four on the second one. Wouldn't have changed the second one. The yeah. second one would hit without that. All right. So first bite damage would be 22 damage on that one. And I think I'll stay where I'm at for the purposes of flanking with Gideon. So I will make that be my... Actually, I'm going to do a quickened magic missile at her, I think. So it's not going to provoke... Give me spell resistance. Yeah, so I have five missiles, so five spell resistance. Cool. Uh, plus plus four on this. So first one's a 28, or sorry, 32. Okay, that'll work. And then second one is a 24. Nope. And then the third one is a 28. Nope. The fourth one is a natural one. Nope. And the last one is a 31. Yep. All right, so two missile damages five damage okay and now i'm done that's my turn all right brings us to gideon okay thankfully i wrote down what i had wanted to do because i completely forgot <laughs> but past josh was smart he's gonna five foot step away cast uh second wind 
healing 16, I think. And then we will cast Cure Critical, healing another 26. And that's my turn. Okay. After Gideon, it goes to Orin. Sure do. I don't remember what the L Elemental's stats are. I believe uh, it has to roll a natural 20 to hit anyways. I believe it does, so I'm just going to roll a 20. 1d20, and we'll see what happens. Four. So it misses. Four was close. Four was real close. I was almost there. Uh, <laughs> and I guess that'll be my turn. I don't really have a okay. whole lot I can do, because they're, they're pretty high up, right? They're like 70 feet in the air. I think they're like... I don't know if there's 70 still. They might 60, 70. There's probably about there. Yeah, they're pretty high up. Yeah. Okay. All right. That'll bring us to Arlanche's turn. She's going to heal up a little bit, and then she is going to swift action cast Grace, drop about 30 feet down. So that she's she's kind of in between all of you. Uh, I don't know if that puts her right next to Jessup or not, but and then she is going to grasp one of the vines that is held, holding her aloft in the air, and you can see a dark energy channel from the hanging cyst thing in the center of the chamber through the vine into her hand, and she will channel negative energy. I need everybody to give me a will save. Lovely. These are not my best. Oh, actually, why am I so buffed? I don't know. You might want to check that to make sure you're not cheating. I'm not cheating, I promise. What is it from? I don't know. But it's good, so I'll roll it. Will save is... Oh, apparently not good because I rolled a natural two. 17. Okay. Oh my gosh, I rolled a natural. This is going to hurt a lot of us. So we have a 16 from Jessup, a 22 from... Gideon, a 17 from Kieran, and a natural 1, 17 from Orin. All four of you fail the check. So you will all take... This is all negative energy damage for those of you who care about that. I don't think anybody has resistances to that, though. So all of you will take 23 points of negative energy damage. Well, it's not ideal. It's not my favorite thing, probably. And... That will be her turn. Brings us to Jessup. Jessup, you're probably maybe not right next to her, but she came down some distance, so you're pretty close to her now. Am I? But I'm not in melee with her? How high do you think you left off at? Can't honestly remember. Because I have it in my head you being like 15 feet up or something, like next to Orin, but like in the air, kind of. Yeah, I I was pretty sure I was in between Orin, Kieran, and... um them but i can't remember yeah, exactly yeah i want to say he was a little higher i want to say he was closer to like 30 feet up 30 feet well she's effectively like 40 feet so you would probably not be within melee but you're pretty dang close okay i don't like it um all right so jessup is going to switch his performance to spy greatness and i believe i should be within kieran and or or uh, kieran and uh, gideon range within 30 feet so I'll yeah, give just yeah. Yep. So inspire greatness on us three. Why don't I get it? Are you, did you, did you take a lot of damage? I mean, no. Well, there you go then. All right. I can only give it to three people anyway. Oh, that was the question. I didn't realize you could only give it to three people. I thought it was a distance thing. I'm like, I'm 32 foot tall. We established this last time. Just as a thing against <laughs> rock people. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so I lose inspire heroics. Correct. And get Inspired Greatness. Correct. Okay. 20 temporary hit point zonies. That okay. is not great either. Ooh. But Ooh. What I did. Well, you got to add your con to that too. Yeah. It's not double your con. It's just your con or... It's double your con. All right. And then uh, Jessup's going to... Uh, ha. Run away. Ha. Ha. Huh. We're going to cast a spell. All right. We're going to do some Cure Serious on get old Jessup. Him tickles. So that is going to be 25 HP. And I guess I will five foot flutter away from her. Not that it's going to okay. make much difference, but... All right. Top of round 28. Uh, one thing that I would like to 
retcon because I forgot about it. There's a lot of active buffs that she still has on. Karen, when you hit her with your attack, you would have had to make a reflex save from the caustic blood that would shoot out from her. I think I remember that and I probably would have changed my action if I had remembered that. Didn't you cast um, resist energy acid though? I did, yes. Actually, I did. I have it checked off on my sheet. So, okay. So I have resist energy acid 30. I'll still roll it just in case it's more than that. So 26 reflex. You technically have to do one for each attack. All right. So one, two, three, four, five. So 26, 27, 24, natural 20 and 23. Did you hit five times? I thought you hit four times. Oh, it's only when I hit. It's not just the attack. No, the, the caustic blood is only when you deal damage to her with a certain type oh. of damage. Okay. Yeah. So then, yeah, it would be the first four. So 26, 27, 24, natural 20. Okay. So all of those will pass. I doubt with half damage and then 30 resistance that you'll take anything. But let me roll it out just to make sure. So it is 30, but that's reduced to zero. Okay. So you take one point of acid damage from the second one. Okay and then nothing from the others. I rolled a 60, a 62, and then the others ones were, were lower. Okay. The 62 had six sixes. Oh my goodness, what? And two fives. What? That was a good roll. But Jeepers. with a half damage and 30 resistance, it didn't really do much. But anyways, Kieran, it is your turn. She is 20, 30 feet below you. All right, it's still a move action away. So I'm going to do another quickened magic missile, I think. All right. So spell spell resistance resistance five times plus four. So first one is 35. Okay. Second is 31. Okay. Third is 20. Nope. Fourth is 20. Nope. Fifth is 20. Nope. (laughs) three fours in a row all right so two of those hit again so the damage on that is 2d4 plus two and nine this time a little bit better and then i will fly up to her to do a bite attack i believe fly down to her well i mean approaching her up to her you know what i mean i'm doing that i'm gonna fly to be within melee of her Okay. And I will make an attack with my biting. Okay. A 28. That will Another miss. four. So that is four fours in a row. Thank you, roll 20. Can Thank you so we much. Get a Yahtzee. No, I'd rather not. But that is all I can do. So that's my turn. Okay. That brings us to Gideon. Gideon, everybody is, uh, like I said, 20, 30 feet below you. What do you want to do? Well, I like to descend to. And I've got haste, yeah? Yes, we do. He did recast it last ra- last time. Yes. I'm gonna cast a buff spell anyway. I'm not gonna go in there. So first we will do divine touch on myself. Heal up a little bit. Have you guys been benefiting from an invocation of destruction? Nope. Okay, well, I think maybe you should have been, but that's okay. Well, I am now. How many of those do you still have? Uh, I've got three left. 28 rounds and you still have three left? I don't normally use them because they don't heal too much. They, they do... Well, in this case, they did pretty well. But uh, Anyways, I will then move or five-foot step to be in range, depending on what I have to. i got to check the range on Wrath. I thought you already descended. No, 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 I didn't. I was thinking about it, sorry. I'm still up there. I was just seeing if I had the hay, so if I had the option to descend, which I do. Shared Wrath is close, so I could get them from where I'm at. So how far down below me are they? Uh, Orin is 70 feet below you. Uh, The others are like 30, and I think Jessup's like 40. Technically, I'm 40 feet below him. Just because of your height? I mean, we established that it's actually length. You're a worm. It's not! We actually, if you remember the end <laughs> part Your of the earthworm <laughs> elemental. Uh, we'll fly down to be uh, in range with them, but still not so close to the scary lady. 
we'll move on down and we'll cast shared wrath okay so i may be i don't know 10 or 15 feet away from her but within 30 for everyone else if that's possible okay that brings us back to Orin. yeah i think i can reach her now right i don't think so i have 15 feet of reach 15 feet of reach then you might be able to DC five acrobatics to jump. Jump, Stone Boy, jump. <laughs> jump. Yeah, I'm huge. So I'm 32 feet high. So 15 feet on top of that puts me at what? What is that? It's 47 feet. We go in multiples of five in Galarian. All right, just round down. Call it 45. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you could probably hit her. All right. I'll, I'll five foot step a little forward to try and hit her. You trip tumble down into the acid at the bottom <laughs> that's fair i mean don't forget i'm fatigued so all my strength bonus is basically null from being a huge earth elemental tired earth elemental and then we'll take some hits i don't have haste so these will be the only hits i'm allowed to take and i'll just miss horribly yeah all of those will miss 32 26 28 ha! Oh, 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 oh. almost Poor elemental. So Almost. close with an 18 out of 20. So close. All right, that's my turn. That brings us to our Lancia. She's going to five foot fly up a little bit, slowly getting out of uh, Orin's range. And then she is going to full attack Kieran. And as a swift action, she is going to channel Smite. So first attack is a 40 even. Yes, that hits. Okay. Second attack is a 38. That's my AC. Okay. Third attack is a 35, 30 even, which we'll miss. And then final attack is a 24, which we'll miss. So, Kieran, you are hit by the first attack, which will deal... 20 points of slashing damage from her scimitar. You are not good aligned, so you don't take any extra damage. It's good for you. And then I need a will save against the channel energy that is being channeled into this attack. Okay. Will save is a 20. 20 will fail. So you will take an additional 38 points of negative energy damage. <laughs> Oh boy. And then her second attack deals 16 more points of damage. I fall unconscious. No, okay. no, not again. You fall unconscious. And you don't have any um, magical means of flight, correct? So. Nope. This is the second time I've fallen out of the sky. Yeah. So you fall, but you're only like 40 feet up, correct? Yeah, but I think I still have to take the negative energy damage, which will, will like, guaranteeingly kill me before I take any fall damage. You, you've already taken the negative energy damage. What do you mean? I don't take that on subsequent hits as well? No, the channel smite is a swift action once per turn. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. a really terrible feat. All right, well, I thought it was, like, an every time she hit kind of thing. No, it's a you spend one use of channel energy as a swift action before you attack... Uh, and then okay. if you miss, you, lo you lose it. That's it's awful. An, it's an awful feat. It's, nobody should take that feat ever. Oh, is Jessup going to do a saving finale on what? No. Well, it, oh, you mean it's too late for the will save saving finale? I, I wouldn't waste it, Brandon. My my will save's only an 11. I don't think I can pass, honestly. So I, I would just save your, save your spell. But thanks for trying. Yeah, the other thing is that I, like, it's hard to say because, like, Jessup wouldn't have probably known that Kieran was going to go down in the next hit. So even then, it's kind of iffy, but... Yeah, so I'm like 30 feet up? 30 feet? Okay, because you went down, she five foot step up. Hold up one second. No, actually, I... Okay, I forgot yes. about my DR. So her okay. scimitar hit would have counted against my DR. What kind of DR do you have? Adamantine? Uh, adamantine. Okay. So you would have taken 10 less from, from the physical scimitar attacks. Yeah. So I'm at one hit point. 
Okay. So, oh, so you're still no. on. No, no. <laughs> You'll live forever. <laughs> so, right. and actually, she hit me twice, right? So, is am I up another ten? Yeah. Was she hitting me twice with her scimitar? She hit you twice with the physical scimitar. Yes. So then I'm at eleven hit points. Okay. Okay, we're getting better and better. I'm gonna keep finding ways to get HP back. All right, that brings us to Jessa. Sure, sure you still want that trashy saving finale? I just, I just really don't think I could pass it. You don't know I that. I mean, if you, if you really want to do it, I, I'll re-roll, but I don't want you to be sad if I fail again. Well, she's not dead now, so there's no real point to it. Just was gonna take some shots, I suppose. Chance of me hitting a slim to none, but let's do it anyway. Shot, 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 shot. We're gonna shot, arcane shot. strike. You set the shared wrath on. Yeah, yeah, you got that wrath. Uh, and did you say destruction too, or no? Yeah, you got that destruction. Alrighty. Let's take some shots. 40, 36, 33, 44. Two of those will hit. Alright, so the 40 will hit for a 23, and the 44 hit for max of 25. Alright, not bad. She absorbs the wood from the arrows and heals. That's amazing. <laughs> I like that. That's cool. Sucks I was using wooden arrows too. Arrow tips. Not the sucks. The yeah. dreaded branch damage. All right. Well, I guess uh, that's my that's my turn. All right. Yeah. You are able to deal some damage there. Top of round 29. Kieran, it's you. It's you again. Oh, really? Oh, boy. All right. Well, we're just trying to do everything we can at this point. So I'll do another magic missile. So I'll roll my five spell <laughs> resistance checks with a plus four. So... Here we go. 24. Is it a quickened Ness. magic missile again? It is quickened, yeah. Dang, yep. you've so got fifth level spell slots left. For days. Oh. Yeah. Nope. Quickened adds plus four to your spell. <laughs> yeah, I was checking off level four. All right, never mind. I knew I was out. You should give her back. <laughs> However much damage. It wasn't much. It was, it was like 10 total because you did five like twice. Yeah. Something like that. Yep, you're right. I'm sorry Nothing about that. Crazy. I was going to say, you've got a lot of 5th level spells left. No, I have a lot of 4th level spells. I do remember last time talking about quickening a 4th level spell, just to be cheeky, but... You have 8th level spells? Quickening quickening a cantrip, that's what I meant to say. Right, gotcha. So I will just full attack her then with my natural attacks. So my bite attack is going to be a 41. That'll hit. My hasted bite is a 35. That'll not hit. My claw attack is a 44. I'll hit. My second claw is a natural 20 with a 35 to confirm, which doesn't confirm. It does hit. And I have to roll a D100. Why? Because she has fortification or something. You didn't confirm. Why would you have to? Oh, I guess that's true. I thought it was, I don't know why I thought that. But anyway, uh, first wing attack is a 39. Second wing attack is a 40. I'll hit. Yeah, your to hit is real rubbish, Sarah. Nope, 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 nope. It's a 34 and a 35. I clicked the wrong buttons for the wings. There's our five less, so those both wow. miss. That went down significantly. Yeah, yeah those will both miss. So I have a bite, a yes, bite and two claws, two claws that hit. Okay. Well, wouldn't the second wing attack at the plus four, though? Yeah, it would, so 39. So then a wing, a wing attack did hit. So yes. bite attack is 25 points of damage. The first claw that hit is a 21 points of damage. The second claw that hit is a 20 points of damage. Okay. And the wing that hit is 21 points of damage. All right. And give me three reflex saves. Okay. So first reflex save is a 16. Okay. Second is a 13. Okay. Third is a 15. Okay. Wow. wow. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I think this is going to bode well. So. Yeah. You take 27 acid damage on your first attack. What? It's 16d6? Sorry, 15d6. Take three off of that. You take 24 points of acid damage. Why is it so much higher than last time? Why did I only take one last time? Because you, you succeeded on all of the reflex saves last time. Oh. 
So it was halved and then minus 30. This time it's just minus 30. So then take back the second, the three damages I did, the 20 whatever, and I only did 25 damage that turn. So, and then I die. All Actually, right. I'm not dead, but I'm going to fall again. <laughs> so 3d10 or whatever it is, 3d6. Yes, 3d6. Take another five points of damage. But I don't because it's bludgeoning okay. and I have DR. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Kieran once again starts uh, bleeding profusely as he goes limp, crashes into the ground. You can see part of his uh, stone skin kind of chips from the impact and he uh, collapses there, bringing us to Gideon. Swift action heal up. Okay. Only cares about himself, this guy. He's just over there healing himself while his buddies are dying. Yeah, that's all he's going to do. Then uh, move action, get into space without provoking. Okay. And a single attack with the old vital strike. All right. 39 will hit. Okay. Roll the weapons damage dice twice and add the results. So I just roll another D8. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. Great. Great. Extra one damage. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Amazing. That's 27. All right. And a reflex saving throw? <laughs> um, yes. 30. 30. Okay, so you will take half damage, and you've probably got some sort of thing. I got a little bit of acid resist, yeah. So you take 22 minus whatever your acid resistance is. 12. 12? There goes okay. my temp HP. All right, you take 12 damage. After Gideon, we're back to Orin. Orin, at this point, she is... Like, I'll, I'll allow you to still attack, but this is, like, the very edge of your reach. If she moves any further away, you're not going to be able to hit her. Um, can I do a heal check on Karen first? Sure. I mean, I just assumed you were going to ignore oh him. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can't tell if he's dead or alive. He's down, though. Dude, he looks healthy as a horse. You, healthy as a horse. It's like, you can tell he is 100% down. Um, in this brief moment, you cannot discern whether he is breathing but you could determine if you cast Raise Dead and it fails, that means he's not dead yet. Well, I could cast another Breath of Life. I have one left. Oh, I guess it could be that too. It's less fun than trying yeah. to Raise Dead and seeing if it works. So I'm going to I'm gonna do that. I'm going to cast a, a Breath of Life. Did you slot three of those bad boys today? Probably had like four of them. At least seven. That <laughs> sounds legit. He used up all of his Airwalk slots for Breath of Life. <laughs> for Breath of Life. <laughs> Yep, Breath of Life has got verbal somatic. You're good, buddy. I remember that from last time. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I'm like, no, I can't cast that. Uh, right, because I was like, oh, I'm an Earth <laughs> Elemental. There's no way I can cast that. It's impossible. And we're like, oh, it doesn't have uh, material components. Oh, okay, good. Then we're fine. Or Divine Focus, even. Right, so we're fine. We're fine. We'll live forever. All right, so I cast Breath of Life then. Okay. One follow-up question. Uh, do you have any uses of your ring left? Uh, I have one left, yeah. Okay, you I might need that because she does still have images. All right. Any more healing on, on Kieran, and yeah, you're we'll going to have to start rolling missed list. chances. Yeah. And that's uh, going to be... Wait, wait, wait. I have one more thing to do. Go, go, Earth Elemental or Air Elemental. Nope. Nope. All right. <laughs> nope. All right. One day. So that is Oren's turn. Does Kieran start breathing? Yeah, yeah, and actually I don't take a negative level because I wasn't actually dead. So I just took straight heals. Nice. Yeah, which is good. So I'm back up, ready to party. Wonderful. It is Arlanche's turn now. Arlanche is going to five foot step up one more time to get out of reach of the elemental. And then she is going to full attack Gideon. First attack. Natural 20 for a 48 to for confirm me? yes this is against Gideon that's not good to confirm that is a 37 does not confirm okay hits but does not confirm second attack natural 19 for a okay. 47 to confirm is a 42 roll a d100 100 okay and this is 25%? 50. 50%. Oh, you have medium. Oh, yes. I splurged. Okay. So, 1 to 50, this is negated. 3. 
nice. very low. Um, okay, so just two normal hits. And then third attack. It's a 30, which will miss. Last attack is a 30, which will miss. Okay. Two normal. And you hit. are good aligned. He happens to be. Okay, so let me add that damage in there. Wow. That didn't roll well. But 20 points of damage. For the first one? Yes. Yeah, and the second one is 29 points of damage. And that will be Arlange's turn. She'll heal up a little bit. Also, because of Caustic Blood, um, the round following people should be taking damage. So, uh, Kieran, on your following turn, you would have had to roll another uh, reflex save, which I, I missed. You would have been unconscious during the time. But All right, so 20. Because this one, this one's a significantly lower damage and it's completely negated if you pass. So it actually would be a 24 because I missed my last reflex save. Okay. Actually, no, I I don't think we're doing this yet because it hasn't come back to your turn since you've been unconscious. Is that correct? Am I jumping the gun on that? Okay, I'm jumping the gun on that. So we'll hold that 24 for your turn, but it'll be Jessup and then you. Okay. So Jessup, you are actually up. How far away am I from her now, you said? So she has been inclining slightly. So you were like 10 or so feet away and now she's 10 feet higher than she was. So you're probably like 20 feet. All right. Just do some shots again. All right. All right. I'm just going to arcane strike again. Swift action. I'm going to maintain performance and pew pew. Oh, we'll at least attempt that. Go for it. You, you, uh, 31, 35, 29, 37. Um, make sure I got all my buffs here. I do, and that is just disappointing. Yeah, oh, all of those will miss, unfortunately. They all hit the rock. <laughs> do I kill the rock? <laughs> the rock goes down. <laughs> Yay, I got something. <laughs> Joseph contemplates if he should put that bow away, and that'll be the end of his turn. All right. Karen, it is now your turn. So now is when we would do that reflex save, and you're and you're sure that it would be uh, 24 because you failed the last one. Correct. Yeah, I haven't done anything since the last time I rolled reflex. So okay. 24 will turn that failure into a success. Nice. Oh boy. Which I think basically guarantees that you take no damage because half of that. Yeah. So you take no damage from the lingering acid blood that is on you. Okay. And you are conscious, but you are prone on the ground. How would you like to put yourself back into harm's way? Uh, I'm going to stand up from prone, and I will use my standard action to dismiss my images. Aww. (laughs) (laughs) Yay, no more guesswork. (laughs) I'm sad. uh, If I die, or it's more like when I die, or if I need to be healed or anything, I don't want to make it more difficult. So that's my whole turn. Brings us to Gideon. Gideon, I need to follow up reflex save from you for the blood. I clicked it, but it didn't go. So if it goes twice, we'll take the first one. I don't know. I like that second one, actually. So 15 <laughs> like- on the reflex save. <laughs> I-, I love that I said it beforehand. And it all yeah. played out just fine. Okay, so a 26 will succeed. Uh, you will take... Actually, no, you negate the damage. I'm sorry, I misread that. It's the The lingering damage is negated if you pass. It is not halved, so you're actually good. You're, you're both of you are totally fine. Um, well, we're gonna go ahead and swift action cast second wind. So, like the third time you've cast second wind, it's the second time, and I happen to just meet the condition often this fight. I That's feel like all. you did it once in the previous battle, though. The pre- no, previous battle, previous session. I don't think so. I'll check another you did. Just, just just so you, just so you feel good, I'll check. I'm not saying there. you can't, because you're a spontaneous caster, so like you can do that. But I'm just saying, I, I think you've done it three times. Anyhow, uh, twenty-one points of damage bring me up to I something think that kills you uh, more than I was, and we will full round attack. Okay. Whew. All right, here we go. All right, we have a fifty-two potential crit with the natural nineteen, forty-two to confirm. Natural one miss, 34 miss, and a 39 hit. So give me a D100 roll, because she also has fortification. Yep. Don't mess this up. No pressure, no pressure. I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm visualizing my requ- desired number. I'm manifesting reality. 25. 
I'm nope, nope. It's not a twenty. Desired number forty-two. Nope. We're looking for a seventy-six. Okay, we're close. We're close. We're close. Sixty. Okay. So the critical does go through. Yes. (laughs) So that is the critical was forty-seven reduced by DR. Yeah. And then the other one is twenty-five reduced by DR. All right. Yeah. Any performance things or is yeah, that me, not no nope, no I'll, I'll roll it just for you how many do i have to roll one two 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 okay and they're reduced to nothing oh, okay. right i gm so rolled sorry, I, i'm looking four. at the gm rolls for that <laughs> uh it looks like those bounce off of a magical barrier that she has you're welcome that's, just to roll it. that's your turn yeah that's it all right give me a reflex save because you did hit her again and the caustic blood is still active it will continue to be active 26, so you do take half damage from this again. So, basically 52, 26, minus 10. So you take 16 points of acid damage. That's that's including your uh, resistances. Yep. Alright, that brings us to Orin. I'm going to cure critical wounds on Kieran. No. Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> <laughs> Ruining is fun. <laughs> you just get to do it all over again. 34. On well, that'll do it. Oh, thank you. That's good. That'll do it. Uh, I feel great. <laughs> uh, 14 on the air elemental. Still not going to hit. Still not going to get us there. All right. And then that'll that'll be my turn because I assume she still has protection from good. So the rock's just useless. Yeah. I think that is <laughs> minutes per level. Sure, surely it's not hours per level. Either way, that's plenty of things. Still a lot, yeah. Okay, brings us to Arlantia. Arlantia will c- try to take out the guy who just crit her, uh, and she's going to channel smite again. She's really going for it this time. Okay. So first attack. It's not a crit, but that is a 43. We'll hit. All right, second attack. I don't think that hits with a 36. No. Third attack, natural one. Last attack, miss with a 22. So only hit once. So you take 27 reduced by 10 for your DR. So you take 17 points of damage from her melee attack. And then I need a will save. Uh, He is unconscious. You shouldn't be if you did the math, right? I should be if you look again because of a particular thing that happened earlier. Oh, you have non-lethal damage? There you go. Well, that's fun. Uh, you still get a real will we'll save, though, even even being not unconscious. Yeah. 22. 22 will actually fail. That's not so good. Could be better. Could be better. All right. So that will be 8d6 negative energy damage. So you take another 29 points of damage. Okie dokies. And you are flying via a fly spell, so you do not fall to the ground well I do slowly yeah I can't remember if you do slowly or if you just levitate I think you do fall slowly okay you see Gideon start to descend in a sphere of blood it's the same rate as a feather fall if I'm not mistaken feather falls pretty pretty darn quick so that is her turn because she only hit the one time uh, and then she'll five she doesn't have to five foot up anymore because she's out of range of the air elemental so not air, the earth elemental. So she'll just stay where she is, I guess. That'll bring us to Jessup. She's all alone up there now. All right. So, uh, ha. Huh. Things aren't uh, looking too good here. That was inner Jessup, obviously. He doesn't talk like that anymore. <laughs> He'll Billy from Long Shadow. Anywho. Uh, yeah. Jessup will just, uh,. He's going to switch performances. So he's going to drop his Inspire Greatness. He is going to start Inspire Heroics on Kieran. And then Jessup will use his last level four spell. Oh. And he's going to Heroic Finale on Kieran. Okay, so Kieran gets a move or standard action right away. All right, well, I think I'm going to have to move up to her. Okay. You have, like, 
five thousand fly speed, so you can easily get there. <laughs> I don't know if it's that. High, but... <laughs> it's not quite like a mile per second or whatever, but yeah. No, it's a very impressive fly speed. This is true. Yes. So even going up at half speed, you are able to get there quite comfortably. Yes, that is how I will make use of that spell. All right. Top of round 31. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we have Kieran. Now, just before we do anything, I just want to make sure, um, because Gideon went unconscious, destruction is no longer active? Correct. Okay. Uh, shared Wrath would, because that's a spell. Yes. So Okay, so take off destruction, but otherwise you can continue with your turn. Kieran, top of round 31. It has been over three minutes that this combat has gone on. All right. I will full attack then with my bite claws wings. All right. First bite attack is a 41. 41 will hit. Second bite attack is a 32. 32 will miss. First claw is a 38. 38 will exactly hit. Second claw is a natural 20. (laughs) Natural 20 for 44, which will hit. Yeah, the confirmation's a 32, so it doesn't confirm. confirm. First wing, 27. Second wing, 27. Okay, so we have 31. Oh, 31. 31. Okay. So we have three hits. Bite attack is 22 points of damage. Right. First claw is 23 points of damage. Okay. Second claw is 19 points of damage. Okay. A couple of things are going to happen here. Number one, I need reflex saves. Uh, 28 on the first. Okay. 22 on the second. Okay. And 32 on the third. Okay. So the first and third of those will pass. Okay. So you'll take half. So you take one damage from the first caustic blood. Okay. The second one failed. So you'll then take 26 acid damage. Okay. And then the third one passed, so you'll take no... Oh my gosh, the nat- the ones in that 15d6. <laughs> you'll take no so damage from that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like half of those were ones. Those were a lot of ones. Wow. Yeah, so you take one damage, then 26 damage. You are still up, so all of your attacks will go through. Your second attack, you can see as you strike her, her body goes limp in the vines... And then in the very next immediate moment, a dark energy surges from that cyst in the center of the room through the vines into her body as the spell Second Wind is cast as an immediate action on her. (laughs) Oh no! (laughs) I know that spell. Gideon's used that like 16 times. Second Wind, she will heal up a little bit here. So the uh, stage two boss fight music pops up. We're like, gosh, darn it. We were so close. All right. So that heals her up a little bit there. And uh, then your final attack goes through, which was how much damage? 19. 19. Oh, that's marvelous. Okay. Okay. I forgot so, something, by the way. Okay. What was that? When I went down, Martyr's Blessing would have gone off. So everyone gets 1d8 plus 15. Okay. Arlancha gets another one. <laughs> nope, not her. <laughs> not her. I believe the term was everyone. Allies. Uh, it's too late to take it back. 19 for everyone, but Gideon. Okay. Uh, I would like to five foot fly backwards. Not that it's going to really do much, but... All right. I would five foot fly backwards, and that's my turn. Okay. Arlancha, you saw that she went limp in the vines, but then that dark energy surged around her and... Her eyes shot open wide as she came back to consciousness. And then, of course, you hit her again, but it wasn't enough to put her quite down. But you can see that she is teetering on the edge of life and death once more. Gideon, that brings us to you. Give me a secret save, not a save check, secret check of a certain ability score variety. And then we'll skip your turn because it doesn't matter what you roll. You're still going to be unconscious. And then after that, it's Orin, Orin, you're out of melee reach. Can I heal check Mr. Gideon? Sure, go ahead and give me a heal check. See if you can roll higher than a natural one. You do. 26. 26. You are able to determine that Gideon is very much unconscious and Josh is Gideon breathing. Gideon's dead. 
You determine that Gideon is dead. I use my last cast of... No, I don't have any more Breath of Life. Uh, I do have a raised dead, but, you know, that's got uh, material components, I'm pretty sure. So. And it's also a one-minute casting time. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, you could be out for a little bit, bud. <laughs> um, nothing I can do. <laughs> Dory, guys, I'm a bard. I will tell her a story for exactly one minute, and she will listen. I'm sure. Perfect. Perfect. Let's see. I'm out of melee with her. Correct. I can't reach Kieran, right? No, I, I'm Correct. flying. He flew up. Yes. Yes. Can I reach Jessup? How's Jessup looking? Is Jessup looking I'm pretty okay? good. Yeah, um, I imagine so. Probably eight out of ten. Probably eight out of ten. You I'd know say. What? We're getting we're getting into the the nitty gritty of it, so we're gonna we're gonna top you off. Jessup only has ten hit points. <laughs> a ten's my max, dude. I. <laughs> We'll do a we'll do a cure serious. Wow, that's probably a I lot. Got, okay. I got plenty of those. You'll be okay. fine. I bet you it won't be enough to bring you up. Twenty six. Oh, so close. And then just for giggles. Nope. I was going to say if that freaking arrow elemental rolls <laughs> in that <laughs> <play> now, <laughs> it gets the kill it blow. <laughs> oh, it'd be amazing. That'd be so good. He's so stupid. <laughs> All right. Oh, Jason, I have a question. What? When what? I when I went unconscious, yes. was I out of her range long enough to get my strength damage back? Why do you have strength damage? Still? It was from it was from the aura. Did that go away? I thought Gideon Purify bodied you, but was that somebody else? Did she do like waves of exhaustion or something? She might have done a ray of some sort. She did. That's why Orin has uh, fatigue because he failed his save. Huh. Because I still have two strength damage on here. And I don't know if I got that after you purified me or not. Because I remember the purify and I thought I took it off. But I imagine you must have because you had way more than two. Yeah, I had like 11. All right, I must have gotten it back somehow, so I'll leave it on there. I don't know what it's from, but... I have no idea. I'll leave it on there. So, it is Arlanch's turn. Sensing that the tide is it's not in her favor, you see her frantically start calling out, and she says, My prince, my prince, come, embrace me, give me your power one final time, and she will channel negative energy once more. I need everybody to give me a will save. Uh-oh. If you are alive. Am I in range of hers? I believe so. You're 30 feet tall. Oh, boy. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, if, yeah. The way I'm thinking you've about been, it is you've been if, she's, whole if, she's, if she's 20 <laughs> yeah. feet away from you, so you can't yeah. hit her. Yeah. That still yeah. means she's 30 feet within, you know, channel range. So. You got me there. Well, it's 29 anyway. Okay. Jessup with a 23, Kieran with a 30, and Orin with a 29. All right. Uh, Jessup fails, the others of you succeed. So, those of you who succeed only take half of this damage. So Jessup takes 25 damage, the other two take 12. She does heal a little bit from her fast healing. That brings us to Jessup. All right, Jessup, the finisher elfin, knows the assignment. No, he's calling it. So help me, Jessup, if you kill her. <laughs> I I just just will arcane strike swift action dear god he's gonna do it the bad lad yes. just a will do go it. round attack <laughs> he does not have destruction I uncheck that I still have wrath Jason however. that is rude four natural <laughs> ones here we go four nat 20s just because of that <sighs> should I roll them one at a time if you want to no <sighs> 42, 27, 20, 45. Wow, two of those bad. will hit. All right. The 42 <laughs> does 22 damage, and the 45 is 20. All right. Reducing that from DR. The first attack, she goes unconscious. <laughs> yes! <laughs> the finisher. The second arrow, just for good measure. The second arrow does strike. You get the sense that the vines are still empowering her. She's not dead but you have put her unconscious. Is that your turn? Jessup turns to Kieran. Kieran, I think I knocked her unconscious. Finish her off. All right. Top of round 32. 
Karen, you're up. You've been told she's unconscious. It might be a trap, though, so you should stay away. Wait, hold? Oh, man, I feel my bluff. That was, that that was a bad bluff. That's terrible. I think with everything that has happened at this fight, with Karen going unconscious, what, at least two times? Maybe three times? times? Yeah, something like that. The amount of damage that he's taken and healed, just how long this has gone on I think he's let the the feralness of the dragon take over and despite the fact that she for all he knows could be dead he is going to tear into her as much as he can and eat her so all I right. will full attack with all of my natural attacks so bite attack is a 37 hasted so bite she is, is unconscious that probably will hit but, like, she's not prone. But I guess unconscious, you lose your dex. I imagine so. All right, well, 37, which might hit, then 41, and then 42 on the claw, 26 on the claw, and then 29 on the wing, and then natural one. Okay. So. Go ahead and roll your damage. So the bite damage for the first one is 20. For the second one is 25. It's hard to see. Is that five? Uh, you're not going to kill yourself with the poison, are you? I don't care at this point. Uh, Alrighty. And then first <laughs> claw is a 21. And I think that was the only one that hit. Yeah. So okay. 20 damage, 25, and then 21. So the first attack does slice into her. Still doesn't kill her because her con is immense. So roll me reflex save. All right, first reflex save is a 17. 17 will fail. You'll take 29 points of acid damage. Heck, <laughs> nabbit, I was so close. <laughs> the third attack is going to get you. me. <laughs> I almost had you with that. If I had done a little bit more damage, that second attack would not have gone through. Second attack goes through, taking her below her con, and she is permanently dead. But I do need another reflex save. I, I rolled all three, so 17, oh, 25, and 20. Okay. Yeah. 25 is enough to pass. Can I do any damage to you, though? No. But you will get me on that third one, because I have two Oh, HP. so you still strike her with the third one? Yeah, because he, like I said, it's just the feralness of the dragon. He's just ripping her apart at this point. All right. A 20 fails, so you will take another 25 points of acid damage. All right. And Karen falls. Amazing. <sighs> <laughs> After Kieran, it is Gideon. After Gideon, it is Oren. Oren, you see. Gideon is there on the ground, dead. Arlantia is now there. You can see her hanging limply from the vines. There is no life left in her eyes. She is clearly dead. The favor of her prince, not enough to keep her alive. And then immediately after that, you see Kieran fall to the ground. What would you like to do? Sword's gonna heal Kieran. (laughs) All right. Uh, So you get back up and start eating more of her. (laughs) Immediately Uh, wakes up and tears into her. Roll roll a heal check first. (laughs) Oh, come on. No. (laughs) You did enough to kill yourself. 23? (laughs) Yeah, he's dead. Oh, my God. (laughs) Kieran literally (laughs) killed himself. Oh um, my gosh. Okay. Uh, okay. With that knowledge, uh, is there anything that you want to do on your turn or are we good to like drop out of initiative? Like, no, does anybody we, have anything they can do time related? No? no? Okay. We will drop out of initiative out of this combat as the two of you are left in this chamber alone with a stone golem who's been observing this entire time. <laughs> A rock that, after probably a round or two, disappears, I imagine. And then, same with the elemental. Uh, The stone golem is up there for a couple minutes more, though. Yeah, he'll go away eventually. What do the two of you do? Warren, do you uh, have any way to help bring them back? I think... I'm not sure if Gideon will reincarnate like we did. It's been a while. I, I don't know what oh, Taryn uh, sounds like. I, 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 Jessup turns. Oh, that's right. I, I can hear Taryn. You're just I, gargling. I think you oh. have pebbles in your throat. <laughs> I'll let the, the, 
an elemental dispel. <laughs> pebbles in your throat. That that's some good ad lib right there, though. I gotta say, uh, that was well well done, Jessup. <laughs> so Orin will be like, oh yeah, I mean I've got uh, I've got one spell that I, I can bring one of them back. Uh, uh, yeah, they didn't have any scrolls on them or anything, did they? Uh, uh, I've only got sure. one. Is Kieran still dragon form, or is he back to his full lab self? Orin will nudge him with so, his toe. It it lasts for minutes per level, and I think I yeah, cast it at the beginning minutes. of this fight. But also, like, <laughs> once it goes away, I'll die even more because my con will go down. So we we don't have any. I'm assuming that happens, Kieran, and then Jessica will just kind of rummage through the bag. There's no scrolls of res or raised dead or anything in there, is there? Mm, nope, we got I nothing. I don't think so. Josh has got one. one. I thought Josh had one. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I yeah, have a race. Gideon thing. has one. Yeah. Okay, so we Fortunately, do have two. he he got scammed and they sold him the scroll without the material component. Oh, yes. Ah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's really <laughs> weird. They don't normally <laughs> yeah. work that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah those those uh, Torog priests that he bought it from, real shady characters. Yeah. They gave him a 5k <laughs> amethyst. It wasn't a diamond. <laughs> Is right. that when you buy a kid's toy with no batteries? <laughs> well, I've never seen a purple diamond, but this looks great. <laughs> I'll take it. All right, so I guess I'll cast Raise Dead on All right. Mr. Kieran. Um, yeah, so you can cast that on Kieran, and then you can use the scroll to... That is my last Gideon. diamond, fellas. If you fail trying to use the scroll to use magic device, it doesn't do anything, right? It's on his spell list, so you can just automatically do it. I wanted to try to do it. You know what? Unconscious people do not talk. Especially when they're dead, dead. <laughs> right, right. I'm gonna go get some ice cream. Yeah, let me know. So use oh, magic device on a scroll. We're not. Want to make sure it doesn't like it doesn't delete the scroll or anything. Use it up. It's just like use twenty plus the caster level of the spell you're trying to cast. So it'd be DC twenty nine. I don't see anything about it using up the scroll in, on my skim here. So. Well, if I'm, I'm just more doing it for flavor. I know he can, but I was just figured I could help out while he gets curing up. Yeah, yep, let him have a go at it. To cast, so yeah. yeah. Uh, twenty-three. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I misspoke one of the words. <laughs> resurrect, not resurrect. <laughs> ah, 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 there was idiot. a smudge. There was a smudge on the scroll. <laughs> it was some of Gideon's blood on the scroll. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right, and so. A minute or so goes by, and the two of you come back to consciousness by expending pretty much the remainder of your resources. <laughs> we got nothing left, boys. Nothing. <gasps> Gideon, I'm glad you're back. You smell like ice cream. So, just to make this more fun, though, you do have to make a DC5 wisdom check. Who? You do. So if you Why? fail, if you fail the caster level check on a scroll, you have to you have to roll a DC five wisdom check to avoid a mishap. Oh, and mishaps oh, no. are a lot of really interesting things. So never has it really, is it really back? Cause I rolled a is one. Is it really back? Cause you rolled a one. Oh <laughs> my God. Oh, no. I don't know about it. No. Pathfinder scroll. I have literally never had to look up this rule before. I, I mean, if I know that this is going to go that crazy, I probably would just let or do it in a minute. Yeah. So now. here's, here's <laughs> some, here's some possible mishaps. So a surge of uncontrolled magical energy deals 1d6 points of damage per spell level to the scroll user. Spell strikes the scroll user or an ally instead of the intended target or a random target nearby if the scroll user was the intended target. It resurrects her! It resurrects no, her! Can't can't drop. Drop. <laughs> you start resing Kieran before Jessa finishes and it kills Kieran again. <laughs> so, so, uh, spell takes effect at some random location within spell range. It, oh no. So you resurrect oh. the- Arlancha. 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 Uh, the scroll oh. user suffers some minor but bizarre effect related to the spell in some way. Most such effects should last only as long as the original spell's duration or 2d10 minutes for instantaneous spells. Some innocuous item or items appear in the spell's area. Or, spell has a delayed effect. Sometime within the next 1d12 hours, the spell activates. If the scroll user was the intended recipient, the spell takes effect normally. If the user was not the intended recipient, the spell goes off in the general direction of the original recipient or target up to the spell's maximum range if the target has moved away. I am going to randomly assign numbers to all of these. 
Are you serious? Oh, no. I swear if you resurrect her. <laughs> I, well, I didn't realize there's all down. these bad things could happen. And what are the chances that I rolled a one? Wouldn't it be funny, though, if, like, Oren is trying to resurrect Kieran and you instead resurrect Kieran with the mishap? Because it could, it could go off on Kieran, too. Yeah. Okay, so I have randomly put numbers in a row. Did you not hear me? Because <laughs> before you cast it, before I left for ice cream, I was like, you can roll a mishap, though. Oh, totally did oh. not hear that. <laughs> did not hear I that. Like, no. I was like, yeah, there is a risk. <laughs> well, that's why I said I'm doing more for flavor. I wasn't going to do it if there was mishaps. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just curious what's going to happen. Go ahead and roll me a d7 in the chat. I don't really oh, want to. Boy. Just want to see what will happen. Two. Two. So according to my list... <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's not as bad as it could have been. So you do cast the spell, and you feel like something didn't go correct, but at the same time, you feel like the spell did go off. But, like, it, Gideon doesn't seem to come back to life. And you're, like, worried. You're looking around. Karen doesn't come back to life, not until, you know, the spell on him is cast. You look up at Arlancha in, like, this moment of supreme fear. She doesn't come back to life. So, I get done, and I guess I assume Kieran starts coming up, and Jessup obviously casts the spell, but nothing happens. So Jessup just kind of turns around and waits. I'm presuming before Oren says anything or sees what's going on, and Jessup's like, "Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe there's something wrong with the scroll that Gideon purchased. Yes, that must have been it. My spellcraft is amazing." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you uh, you bought that from the priest of Turog back at the city, so that seems unlikely, but... 26th bluff. I mean, I guess that's possible. Yeah, must be. So, Karen, you come to consciousness, and uh, you look around, you see that Arlantia has indeed died, and Gideon appears to be dead as well, and Orin and, and Jessup are having a, a discussion... Oren seems to be not too put off about it. He's, he seems like he's convinced of whatever he's been told with that sense motive role he just did in 18. <laughs> <laughs> just so. FYI, I am still in dragon form because if I dismiss that, I'll be at zero hit points. So Yeah, I'm not going to belabor the point. Like you could... You have plenty of time to come to consciousness and take like a potion or something, so. All right. So I would grab a potion from somebody because I don't have my bag. I could just throw a quickie on it. It's not big. Are you literally just need a little bit of a you nugget? Literally just need one point of healing to not be at zero. Yeah. Boop. How about seven? Yep. So then I'll dismiss dragon form and I'll be at seven HP. Okay. And you can see them standing over Gideon's body there. And I had seen that he was dead before. You saw him fall. Uh, you did not personally confirm that he was dead, but you did see that Oren did not cast Breath of Life, so either he was out of spells or he determined it was not worth trying. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, back. Kieran will get up and, like, he's rough. Like, he's looking rough, but he will kind of stumble over to where they're over Gideon, and he'll say, what? Why, did, why did you bring me back but not, not Gideon? I don't understand. We had one choice bring one of our friends back and we decided that you were worthy oh all right well i appreciate that uh why isn't why isn't he changing like you guys did i thought he also had that boon unclear indeed he he did at the start of the fight not sure well he he mentioned that mm, something with milani and he will come back when he is deemed worthy or something so perhaps he's not worthy yet Oren rolls him over uh, I don't know. I don't see any butt wounds. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he didn't have it anymore. Can you see through armor? Yeah, you know, that's a that's a halfling trick. I guess he pulls down. <laughs> <laughs> he lifts up the flag. <laughs> oh my gosh! This is the most disrespectful thing you can right. do. Of course. <laughs> if you two are going to do that, I, there's nothing that can be done. Well, we have to get him out of this armor because we're going to have to take him with us. So it'll have to be a little while before I can try again. And I don't actually think we have the materials for I, well, bringing I've, him back. I'm just, I hope that he will come back. Jessup kind of rolls up the blank parchment paper that he has. 
I will allow Kieran, since he's curious about the situation, to roll a Knowledge Arcana check. Okay. Knowledge Arcana is a natural five for a 23. You're not able to determine what's going on here. Oh, could Jessup do that? I didn't allow you to do it since you're the one who got the mishap. Didn't have to say it like that, but okay. Yeah. It's your punishment. <laughs> uh, Kieran's going to like kind of snap back to reality and all of a sudden he's going to be looking around for Arlantia just to make sure that she's dead. So she still has a body? Yes. He will fly to... Did she fall down or is she still like hanging in the vines? She's still hanging aloft in the vines. All right. Kieran's going to pull out his dagger and fly up to where her body is. Oh, gosh. Stabs her, takes acid damage, <laughs> no. falls down dead. No. <laughs> right? No. Right. He's, he's doing that as a precaution just in case she's still alive somehow, but just as defense, but... All right. He'll look so over her body. It looks like she is definitely dead. So looking over her body, just searching for items. So she has magical armor. She has a magical scimitar. She has a magical belt. She has a magical cloak. She has two magical rings. She has a magical headband. And she has a onyx unholy symbol of Sithbasug. All right. I'm not going to be like taking items off her just yet, but I'll like take inventory of yeah, the auras know, that I see. Yeah. You know, all of the various magical auras on her person. Okay. While I'm up there flying, I kind of want to take stock of the room because we didn't really do too much right. study in the room. So I know that there's the, sure. the cyst like thing in the throne, but is there anything else of note in here? Yeah, if you fly up and you look on the opposite end of the chamber from where you entered, you do see some gloomy recess in the eastern edge, but uh, the vines kind of obscure sight un unless you get a little bit closer. It's hard to see through all of the foliage. Okay, I'll fly back down to the group and I'll say, uh, there seems to be something in the opposite end of the chamber. It's some deep recess into the the wood or the vines I'm not I can't really really tell but I'd like to go investigate I just am not really in good shape to handle any sort of trap or whatnot I don't know we do have potions but do either of you have any additional healing I hate to ask because I know you've given so much but oh uh, yeah I've still got quite a bit left never I seen a corpse eat ice cream before but <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> I thought I was muted <laughs> He's already sitting with Milani enjoying a gelato. It's one of the yeah, it's one of the many blessings of Milani. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you may eat ice cream. Yeah, ice cream. <laughs> and then immediately once he's reincarnated, he shares some of his memories, and that's what drives future faithful forward is oh I remember sharing ice cream with Milani. Yeah. I want to return the there. Followers of Milani are all just massive sweet tooths. Yeah. <laughs> how was the how was the travel? It was a rocky road. <laughs> uh, 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 and Jessup leaves the room. Kieran's nickname is White Lightning. Is that an ice cream flavor? I think so, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, oh, I yeah. have no idea. <laughs> I have to look it up. White Lightning. Human Jessup would have been Flufferdutter for sure. <laughs> yeah, White Lightning Flutter. ice cream is dark chocolate ice cream with streaks of thick mint white fudge lightning. That sounds really good right now. Anyway. All right, so I'm at 65. Do you guys think that's enough to withstand a trap? I don't know. Should I take some potions? I don't want to. Nah, I got I got a few more left here. All right, I hate taking all your heals, but that's fine. I think Gideon had some wands that he wouldn't mind us using. Could just take all. Oh no, he binds. He's he's dead. When he binds, when you come over, you can see a scowl is on his yeah. face. <laughs> 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 no, the truth of the matter is, I don't think I have any anymore. I think I used them all up. All right, I'm at 94, which is basically Jessup's full HP, so I think I'll be okay. You want one more? No, I think I'm... I'm. All right. I mean, we do have potions in the inventory. We never use them. That's rude, Sarah. And my, for clarity, my max is only a 94 now because I have one negative level. So there. I have three negative levels. <laughs> I'm going to be negative leveled for the rest of this a AP. Are you going up top here, you said? I'm going to wherever that recess was. 
I don't know yeah, where she's Jason... She's going over here to the other side of the chamber. Oh, all right. I will cast message on Oren and Jessup so that we can communicado. All right. I'm going to fly over to the recess and see if there's any goodies over there. But also I'm right. checking for traps with my perception check of... Wow. Perception 11. All right. Yeah. So you fail to see the 12 harm spell traps <laughs> and the 20 finger of deaths. I guess I'll die. As you take 12,000 damage. No. I'm just meant to be dead. <laughs> no, so you get over to that side of the chamber and like I said, it's a gloomy recess in this eastern edge. And you're looking around and it holds like a, a grotesque tangle of slimy vines and human-sized cysts. And in... Vaguely, you know, you see humanoid forms floating in some of the thick, like, bubbly syrup within these, like, occluded cysts. And there's several dozen of these that you see, almost like creatures in some sort of suspended animation or, or something like that, all around this chamber. Okay. Can I get closer to see if they truly sure. are creatures? Yeah, you can go up to each of them and... Yeah, it looks like there's various sizes of cysts here. Some of them are small. Some of them are even diminutive in size. Others are medium. I don't believe there are any large sized creatures here, but there are, if you go around counting, it's somewhere in the ballpark of five dozen creatures in this chamber that are in these cysts with this weird slimy substance inside of them. And it seems like they're alive, but they are not conscious. Conscious. But if you get close to some of them and start looking more intently, it looks like they're all different sorts of fey creatures. And the only, I guess with your perception check, I say you don't notice anything super distinctive about any of them. They're just various fey creatures, most of which you can't really identify. All of them seemingly alive, but they don't look like they're conscious or aware of anything going on. Okay. Is there any way... Can I tell, is there a way to safely remove them from these cysts? Or does it seem like this is kind of like life support for them? Roll a, goodness gracious, something check. Uh, Arcana. Nature. Spellcraft. <laughs> Profession I'm think, soldier. I'm trying to think what would be best. Something Kieran has. <laughs> something I'm good at, preferably. I'd. I'd probably prefer either a heal or knowledge nature, to be honest. Well, considering heal is a zero and knowledge nature is a seven, I'll go with the knowledge nature and hope for the best. So okay. this roll is a 15. Okay. You're not sure how you would get them out of here. You don't know if these are keeping them alive or if they're just preventing them from like keeping them in like a suspended animation or something. You're not sure. This okay. seems a little bit outside of your knowledge base. Is there anything else in here of note? Just looking around, uh, other than creatures in these little cells. No, there's, there's no like stored treasures or items or anything. If you're, I guess if you're doing like detect magic or whatnot, you detect that some of these creatures have magical items on them one of which would resonate more powerfully than others. So let me think what would Kieran do? He's definitely not going to just try to cut him out. He would probably defer to Jessup's knowledge on that. Looking around, he doesn't see any items. There's no button on the wall that's going to nope. <laughs> release everybody <laughs> from this. this button. <laughs> You see a yeah. lever just really right next right to your feet. I mean, video game logic dictates that that's, that's what you do. So, all right. All right, so I will head back then, and I'll stop at the throne and kind of take a peek over the throne and do detect magic and look around. Okay. It looks like as you're standing on top of this cyst here... I'm not standing um, on it. My, my boots are not touching that thing. I'm As fine. you land... No, nope, I'm, I'm on not. top of because I feel cyst. like when you say cyst, I feel like you step on it, it and your boots like sink in to like fleshy to substance. In, no, I'm not doing that. You're teleported right in front of Sith no. Fasug himself. He's not dumb. He's not doing that. So hovering above this, 
you can tell that it is still beating. Oh, gross. The whole thing is still pulsating. Not as vigorously as before, but it is still somewhat. Uh, There's nothing unique about the chair here. It's made out of probably the same wood as the rest of this tree, heavily blighted like most of the surroundings. Nothing else of, of note. With that, I guess I will return back to the others. Just trying to think, like, there's a lot of blight happening here, and I don't think there's anything we can do to get rid of it. I was looking to see if the Dryad song with that four ring power can get rid of blight on, like, an area, but it looks like it has to be a creature, so. Give me a knowledge arcana. That that definitely says you can use it on fungus and plants infected with the dark blight. Does it? Where does it say that? As a full round action, purge a single creature within 60 feet as if they had successfully cast remove curse and remove disease, even removing the blighted fey template from a target creature. All of these spell-like abilities affect only fungus and plants infected with the dark blight. Yeah, but that's not like an area. You have to target a single creature. It's got other spell-like abilities, though. That's not the only thing it does. Yeah, but, like, it has plant growth, black tentacles, tree dried, blight, don't want to do that, entangle, wood shape, diminish plants. Diminish plants could work, maybe. Like, get some of the blighted stuff out of here. Jason, from the side view, where that cyst is, and there's, like, those tendrils connecting it to the, to the area of the tree, are they just, like, vines, or is that, are they, like... Can you see pulsing stuff into the tree from those? Those tendrils are extraordinarily thick vines. Those bridges that you guys were walking on are those tendrils. There's dozens upon dozens of other vines, but those ones are so small that they weren't represented on the map. But there's, there's like hundreds of vines connecting this thing to the surrounding chamber, but there's only like four or five that are so thick that you could walk on them. And... It looks like, so before, there was an energy that was almost emitting out of this beating thing, and it was channeling through the vines into the tree. The energy has no longer, it's it's no longer emitting outwards. It's not retreating inwards. It's just kind of in a in-between state at the moment. The thing continues to beat, but it's, it's almost more like a deceased heart. It's not like pumping this energy outwards. So could I try to remove the blight from the heart thingy? Uh, Kieran, roll me that knowledge arcana. Oh, you did. I did. It's a a 32. Yep. So, Kieran, you get the sense that a diminished plants spell might actually be of some use here, and there are some other spells that could do it too, like horrid wilting and, and so on. But you think that this this thing you're dealing with is so extraordinarily powerful that you wouldn't be able to succeed with just one casting of a such spell. You would have to cast a spell like Diminished Plants or Horde Wilting or something like that multiple times in quick succession, like like half a dozen times or so like in an hour or something like that. Multiple times in a short period in order for you to actually have an effect because this is a, a big entity, a big powerful entity that you are dealing with but that would be the way to go just removing the blight wouldn't really work because this is almost like the blight itself and we can only do the diminished plants once per day so that's not gonna help man it would be nice to have a druid in the party uh all right so i guess with that kieran will head back to the group and he'll recount what he saw and say you know he he can carry gideon if we want to take gideon up there so that Jessup can look at around or he can stay with Gideon if Orin and Jessup want to go and I can cast fly on you Orin if you want to try to fly up there. Yeah, Jessup does not have a way to fly either. I can cast fly on you. I've got uh, I've got some third level spells. Got any dimension doors left? I don't know if it'll work yet because we had the dimensional anchor. I don't know. Well, I guess oh. I could spellcraft that or knowledge arcana that to know. Let's see. So 35, Knowledge Arcana, Dimensional Anchor, or I don't even know if that's what it was. Do I get any the sort of The Dimensional Barrier that you felt 
prohibiting teleportation since you cast it the first time you feel is still in place. You haven't felt that oppressive nature leave yet. Okay. So yeah, I won't be able to, to teleport. I can always go over and check over those uh, people in the pustule things. Yeah, I'll cast fly on you and that'll last for like 12 minutes. Um, I'm going to, before you do that, Kieran, I'll just give you my um, extend med magic rod, level through okay. the lesser. Just that way I have it for more. I have one of those as well, so I could use mine. I think I used one casting of that. I have a greater extend meta magic rod, so I can use that on you. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't meant to be like that. Hmm. hmm. Got a better if rod you would you prefer fair. if you would prefer handing me your rod, I will take your rod and use your rod. Whoa. There's nothing wrong with my rod, Kieran. It works I as well as say- yours. Mine's just a greater rod than yours is. Well, <laughs> it's not the matter of spell you can cast it, it's how you use it. Just take it. <laughs> Alright, I will use Jessup's rod to cast Extended Fly on Jessup. Thank you. <laughs> You'll hear. And then okay. he floats away. <laughs> Over to here. Alrighty then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're flying over to the other side of the chamber then? Yeah, I was going to check those pustule right. lilus. You head over there, and you see the same thing that Kieran did. It's about five or so dozen of these creatures in these cells filled with slimy ichor of some sort. They appear alive, but in some sort of suspended state. They're not, they don't seem aware of their surroundings very well. Um, all right, Jessup will attempt to do it again um, or, or uh, try to do the knowledge check. Yep, heal or knowledge nature. Uh, I'm going to go with knowledge nature and I still have investigative mind so I will roll with advantage uh, 31. Okay. Looking at how these vines go around and how these cells are positioned, it doesn't look like there's anything about this that would be like keeping them alive. You don't think that breaking them out of this would like instantly kill them or anything. Looking at the substances around, maybe checking some of the slime on the ground here and kind of getting a sense of what it feels like on your skin. It's it's almost more like a numbing agent than anything else. You think this is just like keeping them from acting of their own volition more than anything else. So if you were to just break them out, they would probably be fine. Okay, uh, Jessup will relay that with that message spell. So I guess Orin would probably maybe say back to Jessup, uh, you don't have to see the uh, the lady of the forest, do you? Anybody that looks like her, maybe? Or could be her up there? Jason, do I see anybody that looks fancy? Give me a perception check. Any fancy people? May I take a 20? Sure, yeah. What's your perception bonus? Eight. So 28 total? Yes. Okay. Looking around, it takes you a while. You're going one by one to each of these. So you take a couple minutes studying each individual. And all of them are fancy. All of these have extremely ornate clothing. But there's one that is very curious. Not only does this individual have extremely ornate clothing, there is a crown of woven thorny vines on this creature's head. And inset in those vines is a blood red gem that is, you might say, of sardonyx description. (laughs) I wonder what that is. Hmm. Hmm. Jessup relays that as well. And I will actually, I'll put that token on the map so you can see what I'm talking about. So it's the one in the furthest back. And I'll blow that up a little bit so you can see it. The image oh, does not relay this particular crown. She has goat legs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This, the creature that you're looking at has viney fingers and goat legs. Yeah, that's uh, that sounds like the lady we came to find, and uh, we just got to figure out how to get him out. What, what was her name again? Jason, I'm sorry. You were here to speak with the earth goddess Genduin. Well, that, that's, that's right. not why you were here to speak with. You, you were here told that she used to rule here. Yeah, so, I mean, would could Jessup use a dagger to cut her out without getting the numbing agent on himself? You could try. Go ahead and give me a... You don't have to worry about attack rolls or anything, but just give me damage. What damage would you do with a, with a dagger? 
really bad. Five. Okay. So you start hacking away at this this cell, and the outer layer of it is deceptively sturdy. It almost feels like actual armor that you're trying to pierce through. You're making not even a dent, and it, it kind of caves in slightly, so you're not even getting a good force on it. It's almost like, what is that stuff, oobleck? Where it's like, it's very like liquidy until you hit it hard, and then it's, then it suddenly solid, solidifies. It's kind of like that sort of a substance. It's like, it reverberates when you hit it, but it's like rock hard at the same time. And you you don't think you have the strength to cut your way through this. Ah, we need Kieran. So Jess will... I attempted to cut them out, but uh, my feeble arms are just too weak. All right, well, I can I can come back over there. O- Oren, are you all right staying here with Gideon, or should we all go and I can carry him? Yeah, no, I mean, I can I can wait here if you want. That's that's fine. All right. I will fly back over here. Take my eye. Take my eye. Okay, I will take your eye. She takes my eye. Your your eye hat, the, the yes. eye on the hat, is that what it is? Yes. Correct, because then I can see stuff. Okay, yes. I shall take your little eye with me, and I will... I guess I could try with my glaive to cut it. Okay. Because that's slashing. What's the damage you do on a glaive? Uh, 1d10 plus 9 plus acid. So you want me to just roll damage? Don't include the acid. So 1d10 plus 9. So your average would be around like 14. Yes. Okay. You hack at it like five or six times. You think you are cutting it, but almost like a piece of glass that's like two inches thick you're you're realizing that the the thing that's holding the stuff inside is actually very thick like you are cutting it but this will take you at the rate you're going a very long time all right can i use fire to like burn it away uh if you attempt to use fire it seems mostly resistant to that Hmm. what about electricity like a shocking grass (laughs) You could try that. That might no. Ha- that hey. certainly might have an effect. Well, it would. Yeah, no. Did um we uh, now? Not that I'm going to, but could we take the rod um and use diminish plant on thing around it? That's what I was just going to say. I don't know if that's a plan, but can we use the rod on it? Try and use the rod on it. You can try to take it over there and see. Yeah. Because my other option was to try to ray of frost to like freeze it and then try to hit it and like shatter it that way. But your way makes a lot more sense. Okay. Just fly back down. Ah, be right back. Take the magic rod and fly back up. All right. So, Jess, if you take the rod and uh, the dryad song and you're walking into this chamber and as you're walking, it it looks like these these cysts, these cells that are holding these creatures, it's almost like they're trying to move to get away from you as you hold this. And like as you walk up to the the cell here next to Kieran, and you're kind of like holding the rod in front of you. It's so close to the cell. You almost, it almost sounds like the cell itself is evaporating just from being near the rod. Oh, well, I pulled it closer. Yeah, you hold the rod out and you lightly tap the cell and it immediately begins to just evaporate as the liquid within pours out. And this creature kind of, collapses onto the ground and after a moment she gets to her feet and you can see her looking around at her surroundings clearly very disoriented and then a moment later there's a combination of relief and anguish that blooms on her face as it seems like she's beginning to realize what has happened and she she speaks she says free I am free How long I've languished in that darkness. How much suffering my force has endured. My vain little child resented standing shoulder to shoulder with my other servants. She sought to grind us all beneath her heel. Pity such wit and potential could putrefy in the boundless font of entitlement. It seems I owe you some 
enmity over slaying my favorite handmaid, but also gratitude for freeing me from an intolerable confinement. I wonder which should carry more weight. I would prefer not the former. Ah, yes, what my colleague says. She kind of tilts her head a little bit, a very serious expression, and the two of you are looking at this creature, and it seems that she is tired and exhausted and weak, but at the same time, you get the feeling that you are no match for her. And she, after a couple moments of tense silence, smiles, and she says, Yes, I suppose you are right. Thank you for what you have done, for freeing me, for freeing all of us. Perhaps now we can finally begin to heal. Yes, unfortunately, I don't think that we have the power to do much else here for you. No, uh, we are about as exhausted as it can get. Jessa points to the big cyst. Now, that's something. Maybe you can help take care of now? She begins striding out from the chamber, and she takes in the whole scenery, and the two of you can sense a boundless sorrow coming from her. It's almost as if the very area around this chamber itself reacts to her emotions in some way. And she holds her hand aloft and snaps her fingers and Dryad's song disappears from your hands, Jessup, and immediately appears in her grasp. And you can see that the blighted touch that had been on Dryad's song dissip dissipates as the corrupted Dryad's song transforms into the true Dryad's song, which I will put the, to the uh, handout for that in your uh, book five handouts, and I'll read what it does now. The gleaming golden scepter bears elegant bows and leaves blooming into a miniature flowered treetop at one end. The scepter's rod has four slots, just like it did before, and it has all four rings, just like it did before. But the words on it now say, Daughters of the Fangwood Green, hear my ardent call. Discharge now to oaths long sworn for a cresial glory, live or fall. And I'll just read the abilities here. You wouldn't necessarily know what they are, but... Holding the Dryad Song gives a plus four morale bonus on diplomacy and intimidate checks against Fey within the Fangwood. It also allows the casting of diminished plants, entangle plant growth, and wood shape at will, though they only affect plants from the Fangwood Forest. Uh, three times per day, reciting the full poem as a full round action allows the wielder to summon 40 hit dice worth of Dryads, Nymphs, Nymphs, and Satyrs or allows the wielder and up to 19 additional medium or smaller creatures to teleport anywhere within the Fangwood Forest as if they were very familiar with the destination. And then it goes on about how, how long the summoned Fey would last and so forth. Unlike the corrupted version of the artifact, the fully restored Dryad Song grants access to its magic whether its various rings are slotted into the scepter or not. Just like the corrupted version, it can purge the dark blight from a living creature within 60 feet as a full round action. A ring from the scepter may be gifted to another creature. The ring can be worn as a bracelet or on a necklace, occupying the appropriate item slot. Doing so grants a plus three resistance bonus to the wearer's saving throws, and once per day, the ring can be used to contact the wielder of Dryad's Song via a sending spell. And, uh... The Gleistig Genduin maintains a powerful connection to the artifact and can summon it to her hand as a standard action. So, with the restored Dryad Song in her hand, she proceeds to spam cast Diminished Plants at will, and after half a dozen castings, you can see the cyst in the center of this chamber begin to shrivel up, and you get the sense that it will take time for the process to fully complete but its power is receding now and she turns once more to face the two of you and says 
It will take time, centuries perhaps, but the Fangwood will be restored. I will see to that. And she begins to walk to each of the remaining cysts, freeing the rest of her kin, which would take like a bit because there's like 60 of these. She's walking around for a little bit here. So with this, will the blight within the forest cease to expand? Yes, it will cease to expand. It has already ceased to expand, but purging it entirely, as I said, will take time. No doubt there will be pockets of the blight that will remain hiding like my kin have hidden for these many centuries. The effort to hunt down these last remaining cysts. It will take much effort, but it will be done. And what of the creatures stricken with the blight? Will they have any chance at healing, or are they doomed to be blighted until they die? I will see to it that they are healed. None in the Fangwood. I allow none of them to fall from the blight. Jessup kind of jumps up excitedly, kind of punches Kieran in the arm. It definitely doesn't hurt Kieran at all because Jessup was weak. But, Kieran, we did it. We did a thing. The blight. We've had to endure it for months. Years even for me, with the uh, having the Fangwood being my home. I know we still have a long road ahead of us with Iron Fang, but we did a great thing today. Yes, I suppose we did, Jessup. It's just all a bit overwhelming, I think. I don't know if I'll really be able to enjoy this victory until we have taken out the larger enemy, I suppose. Do not lose hope. We must enjoy every victory we have, as small as they are. You both hear Gendwin sort of giggle as you speak, especially when uh, when Jessup says that you've done a great thing, and then when Kieran says that it's all a bit overwhelming. Both of those times, you can kind of hear her faintly laughing to herself, and, and then she kind of turns and says, Yes, today you have freed a legacy and earned the gratitude of a goddess. Far more in a day than most of your kind accomplish in the momentary glimpse of life granted to you. After she frees the last of her kin, she waves the dryad song once more above her head and says, I think it is time to leave this wretched place. And in the next moment, all of you in this chamber, Gideon and Orin included, all of you find yourselves teleported back up to the surface. Does her Lancha's body with all the loot teleport too for no reason whatsoever? <laughs> Arlancha's body would come with her because that is her handmaid so she wouldn't just leave her down here but you teleport why, back to why the is service. my handmaid naked? <laughs> what have you done with her <laughs> items? <laughs> that is how she clearly fought us. <laughs> These were gifts I bestowed to her myself. How dare you? They weren't there when we <laughs> fought her. We promise. <laughs> so did you guys kill the Jub Jub bird? What happened with that? Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. We didn't kill the big, uh, crazy thing in the mushroom that almost made yeah, Kieran. The Jabberwocky. Thank you. Oh, the ban- Bandersnatch? Yeah, or Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch. Yes. yes. <laughs> Same <laughs> story, different monster. We don't know about the spiders at all. And uh, the one crazy chick we got the ring from were the Scorpion Pals are still alive, too. Oh, yeah. We, we just totally left Wendell and Merrill. They're probably just waiting for us. Like, I wonder what happened to them. <laughs> No, we talked to them. We retconned it that we talked to them. No, we talked to them, but we went down. But if we're getting teleported to the surface, they're just waiting at the oh. entrance down to this place. <laughs> Once you get to the surface, you find they are also up there. Oh, okay. It seems that they ha- she has basically teleported everybody up and there And the her. hobgoblins as well? The hobgoblins are not there. Huh. You don't know what that means. Dead. Eaten. By the painter snitch. Yeah. Probably. You don't know if they're dead or they already got out of the tree by the time she cast this. It's hard to say. Mm-hmm. But everybody is up there at the surface and you're actually next to the corpse of that jub jub bird. And again, you can feel sorrow emanating from her as she, she looks at the creature and she walks up to it and she says, Ah, Quensal, breathe once more. As she will cast a spell and the jub jub bird comes back to life and she will then putting a hand on its beak and you can see that it's still a blighted creature it's it's still well 
it's still rabid, basically. But with one hand, she's pretty much holding it in place. And she then casts another spell to calm it. And it's almost like a veil lifts off of the eyes of the creature and it immediately becomes docile. Jessup kind of like steps forward to Gendwin and goddess uh, Gendwin and Jessup kind of bows. Um, my name is uh, Jessup Elfin, a uh, ranger from the Nimothi in, in the Fengwood. Can I ask you a sensitive question? Perhaps. With just standing in your presence and the might that you are exuding and, and from what we've seen thus far, h- how did this happen? How were you overcome by your handmaiden? Ah, a sensitive question indeed. It is perhaps partly my own fault. Arlantia was one of several handmaids that attended to me. I considered all of them as daughters, and they all saw each other as sisters, except Arlantia felt that she was special, that she was brighter than the others. She resented the fact that I considered them all equal. She sought to be my right hand, and perhaps I did not attend to her as I should have and let her feelings spiral out of control. But she began to draw herself away into the base of her tree where we just were, searching for more power. And that is where she found Sith Visag. There was a scimitar once. I plundered it from Tree Razor himself in my war against him long ago. I kept it there, hidden away, but she had found it. And through its influence, Sith Vasug granted her more power. She renounced me, and she fought it back. My power was still greater, though. I conjured a terrible storm, an incredible might of power. But I wavered for a moment in the face of my handmaid. I hesitated, and she used that moment. She took that spiteful scimitar and completed a ritual to taint Dryad Song from within my own grasp. And in that brief moment, the magical backlash tore a swath through my flesh. It weakened me just briefly, but enough that she was able to overpower me in that last moment. As I said, a mistake on my part, but one that I will not make again. Oh, kids will do that to you. She has a bitter smile. Uh, Go ahead and give me a knowledge history or knowledge religion check if you'd like. Sure, whichever I prefer. Yeah, whichever. Can anyone who is listening do the check? Oh uh, yeah, anybody who is paying attention. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna roll with advantage here in a minute. <clears throat> Somebody aiding or just rolling on their own? I I can try. I was to gonna aid. roll on my own, but oh. <laughs> I got a four on the die. I rolled Yikes. a twenty to aid you, Jessup. Okay, so nice. two higher than this. Uh, Thirty-two. Would have been a 34, but somebody is selfish. Yeah, all well, right. I don't even like you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you said a 32? Correct. All right. So I put a couple more handouts in the campaign lore section, one of which is specifically about Tree Razor. I am not going to read the whole thing because it's actually quite long, but you would know, Jessup, that Tree Razor is a powerful demon lord. It is a servant of Sith Visug known as Lord of the Blasted Tarn, it resides in the Tangle Briar in Kionin. It is a chaotic evil creature, and you know that long ago, there was rumors of a war between Tree Razor and several other creatures. This would have been, like, 
I can't I'm, I can't remember the exact date, but it was like ancient history. Being a bard, you might be the only one who would really have any chance of knowing this sort of information. It's just a folk tale, to be honest. But now that you are talking to somebody who was actually a part of that folk tale, you're realizing that there's quite a bit more truth to it than you might have thought before. I actually have a handout. So the handout that I was talking about has a picture of Tree Razor. So I'll show it to you guys. That is what Tree Razor looks like. Oh, that's sick. Looks like it was said in 2632 AR. I don't know how that yeah. relates to... That would have been roughly 2,000 years ago. Holy cow. Because you're in 4717, so... Oh, boy. All right. Can we yeah. take one more moment, though? That art is... That's cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so that art is a picture of Tree Razor corrupting the elven portal that they used to go back and forth between planets. Oh. Yeah, I was going to ask if that was a gate. Yep. He was uh, attempting to corrupt one of these Sovereign Stones. That aspect of it, Jessup would not know. I don't think Sovereign Stones would be known to anybody outside of Keonan, but... Huh, that's good, because Brandon doesn't know what the heck that is either. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 do, you do know a little bit about Tree Razor, and uh, it is another being of immense power. I uh, I, I think it's another creature that does not have a stat block. I don't I don't believe he has a stat block. So, yeah, you're, you've got some extra context to what she was saying there. But uh, she turns after, you know, bringing her her pet jub-jub bird back to life and calming it down. She looks to the four of you and she says, Now that I have a chance to take in my surroundings a bit more, my mind is clearing. I see that... Well, the four of you are worse for wear. One of you appears to have died in the fight. Very valiant. And then two of you... Your souls... Do not match your bodies. It's very curious. Have you been reincarnated or something? Yeah, actually, I was uh, I was going to say... Uh, uh, I'm actually from uh, Kragadon. I'm actually a dwarf. Um, my lady... Uh, we've always had great relations with the Fangwood and your people. We sent a few delegations to try and, uh, you know, talk to you, but uh, eh, clearly things didn't go well. Pretty sure those delegates died somewhere here in the forest. So, for the, the third time, you all sense a almost suffocating sorrow emit from her. And she actually, like, tilts her head forward almost like a, a bow in a way and she says I am truly sorry that your people suffered at my expense well that there's no need to, to bow you know we just wanted to check in because we hadn't heard from you in a while and uh, you know the dwarves honor their treaties and uh, we, we just wanted to check on you but obviously it wasn't enough and we've we've had a bit of our own situation uh, so we couldn't send a force out here. May the honor of dwarves be known to all Fae in the Fangwood. Yes, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure once word gets back to Kragadon that uh, you're back in the Fangwood safe again, a delegation from Kragadon will be here in short order. And we will welcome them. I hate to ask, is there anything you can do to our friend here? Points to Gideon. I may have tried to help and. I'm not sure, really. Ah, she looks at him and, and she says, Oh, I see. You attempted to raise him. It uh, was a success, but it appears the effect has been delayed. Effectively, um, I rolled, well, you rolled on the random list that I had made up, and it was the delayed one, and then I rolled a d12 and I got a two. Oh. <laughs> so the raised dead will go off in two hours, but it's been like, probably an hour of you guys walking around investigating things, looking around, blah, 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 blah. She says, my power is still diminished and I have used up some of it already, but I have enough left that I can perhaps speed things up a bit. And uh, she will kind of lay her hand on Gideon and effectively cancel out that extra hour uh, and the raised dead will go off. So... Gideon, you will come back to life after the raised dead cast that uh, Jessup used. 
does finally succeed, just somewhat delayed. Jessup kind of leans down quickly to Gideon and he will kind of whisper. I'm sure everybody can kind of hear, but he'll kind of whisper and Gideon, we won. You can relax. I may have messed up the cast of resurrection, but uh, you are fine now. Oh, and please be mindful. We are standing in front of the great goddess Genduin. Oh, uh, forgive me, uh, Genduin. He'll try his best to stand quickly and then he'll do a, a knightly bow or get down on one knee or something. And then after paying respects, he'll immediately kind of sit back down. We won, he said. Well, to some extent, yes. That's great. And he's going to fall fall down and just kind of like doze off. Because <laughs> yeah. even though being brought back, he's at no hit points. What does Ray's dead bring you to? I think it's... Uh, it's you like, come back huh? with your hit dice worth of hit points. Okay, so 15 hit points. And you have two negative levels and there's stuff with spells, which I haven't done yet. Gendwin looks around to her kin and she says, My fellow members of the Acresial Court, these fine mortals have rescued us. I know we are all weakened, but perhaps some of you could spare some aid. And a few of these fey walk up and it, it's a it's a mix of many different fey. There's atomies, dryads, nymphs, pixies, satyrs, and when it was a glystig, there's a, a large number of different creatures here. And a few of the dryads walk up and they begin casting basic cure spells. But like, even though they're like cure light or cure mod spells, there's enough of the fey here that they are able to heal all of you to full. And Gendwin says, well, we have quite a bit of work to do. And you have all been brought back to life and healed of your minor wounds for now. I offer you hospitality here for some time and you have earned my favor. Is there something that I can do to repay you? Well, uh, we, we we actually came here with uh, a specific purpose in mind. Uh, we're actually looking for a piece of an artifact. Maybe you could help us with that? She smiles and says, Oh, do you mean this? And she takes the sardonic shard from the crown. Actually, she takes the whole crown off because it's still thorns. And then she takes the sardonic shard out of it. And she says, I'm not familiar with this. I don't know much about it. Well, uh, it actually comes from a dwarf artifact. Uh, I don't remember. Did, did we know that? Did the dwarves give her that shard? So here's what you know. You know that this artifact uh, was found by Kragadan himself when he was right. delving into the Darklands. Like, he discovered it kind of by chance and used it for the quest for Sky. It was then stolen many thousands of years later by the Iron Fang Legion. And you were... Well, Carburton was using a spell to try to locate the Sardonic Shard. And he picked up that it was in the Fangwood. Oh, so we have no idea how she got that shard. You would you would probably be able to assume that the hobgoblins must have brought it with them because there's no other way that it could have gotten here. It was with the Iron Fang Legion. Somebody from the Iron Fang Legion must have brought it with them here. Um, the four that you had originally questioned seemed to have no knowledge of it. So you would probably deduce that Targrith must have had it himself maybe secretively oh. so that's a misunderstanding i had then I, that was a misconception i thought that this had been blighted much longer the fangwood has been blighted for at least seven or eight hundred years the sardonic shard has nothing to do with the blight so did targreth secretly put the crown on that's what i'm saying yeah like, no so if you guys kind of question this Gendwin would say I can't say for sure of some of these details, but I was, while unaware in my suspended state, I was still able to sense a link to Arlantia, and I did learn some things from her. 
it seems that these hobgoblins had come here for some sort of treaty with her. Perhaps the one brought this artifact with him as some means of assurance or escape or whatever it is used for. Maybe not realizing that the blight would prevent any such tricks from being used. When Arlantia took hold of it, and this I recall distinctly, she thought it would be ironically humorous for an item like this, used normally to escape, to be so close to me, who is imprisoned. Oh, that is that is pretty twisted. She she definitely went bad. So we actually would like that, if you don't mind. I have no need of it. It is not a possession of mine. You are free to take it if you'd like. And she hands it out. Jessup kind of bows, puts his hands out and takes it. And thank you. You have much work to do with the Fangwood. But we have much work to do in Malthoon and Nirmathos. Those names don't appear to mean anything at all to her, as she does predate those kingdoms. Oh, well, you got some catching up to do. As a as a son of Krakadon, I mean, I'd 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 hate to you know waste this opportunity. You wouldn't happen to be able to make my soul one again, would you? I'd love to be a. I don't mind being a halfling, but uh, it's not exactly the dwarf I'm supposed to be. She looks at you with an air of affection and she says, given all that your people have done and suffered for me, that is the very least that I can do for you. And she will, you can see that she's straining herself at this point. She is very weak still, but she strains herself somewhat to cast one more spell and you do revert back to being a dwarf. <gasps> Yay! She turns to Jessup and she says, What of you? Oh, that's a good question. I'm afraid that I am a bit strained at the moment, but I can provide you the same courtesy at a later time if you would like to think it over. I think... That would be lovely. I'll take a rain check on that. I feel that this new form does give me some additional benefits for the fight that is to come. Very well. Well, as I had said before, you are all welcome here in the Fangwood. We have much to do, much to rebuild, and we have many of our kin yet to be saved. This will take time, but with my power slowly returning... Eventually, the Fangwood will be whole again. And with that, we will call an end to book five. We'll pick it up in the Fangwood for book six. But before book six, you do all level up. Yay! So we can think about what we want to do. But uh, yeah, that's, that's all I've got for book five.